It was February 14th, 2018. I remember it like yesterday. And we received the news that there was a school shooting in nearby Parkland at the Stoneman Douglas High School. Within an hour, the Red Cross notified my wife, who serves as disaster mental health first responder regarding deployment. Because of my training and experience with IOCC as a frontliner, I was asked to participate. Within hours, our mental health and spiritual disaster team was in a van on a nervous and prayerful drive to the area. Passing barricades, cars jammed up for miles as parents were anxiously trying to locate their children, we arrived. We met with the local team leaders and we were about to serve the needs of first responders. After a few preparations, we were redirected to the family notification center at the nearest hotel. We soon learned that this is where the families of the victims were being held, waiting for the hopeful news that their children were alive. While we knew the inevitable outcome, our responsibility was to sit, listen, pray, and offer a loving hand and a gesture to those who were suffering. Throughout the night, one by one, families were called out to be told of the news. Over the next few weeks, we had much work to do with our own St. Mark families, especially our young people, who were experiencing much anxiety, fear, and trepidation about returning to school. The first Sunday after the incident, we gathered for a memorial service for those who lost their lives. We prayed for them by name and asked our Lord to comfort each of their families. We offered a supplications barakadasi service a few days later for the families of those in need. In Sunday church school, we had special guests come in who specialize in trauma and speak to the children. We addressed the parents through different forums and did a parish youth project, a banner, that was hung at the high school. It was a real tangible way for our young people to be involved. You see, we live in an area in South Florida, an area of the country where disasters hit with hurricanes, and thus we try and be prepared to the best of our ability. At St. Mark, we have created a culture of responding to disaster at our local parish. We have an emergency response team that is made up of our clergy, healthcare professionals, members of our parish council, philopticos, law enforcement, and young adults. We are ready to respond to any need of a parishioner during a crisis. We have been on parishioners' roofs, helping secure tiles, boarding up windows and homes, delivering food, and bringing water and ice to our shut-ins and elderly. Pretty much when crisis occurs, we try and be ready. We prepare first and foremost our homes and church home. Once that is taken care of, we reach out to our faithful and assist in preparing their homes and care for their needs. And finally, we reach out to our community at large and make known our availability to be a resource within the local community. Too often during this process, we tend to forget the young people in our parishes. They are a true source of inspiration and can offer so much. By offering young people the opportunity to take part in mission trips, home builds, and occasions for service to the greater community and those less fortunate, it creates in them an innate desire to serve others. It creates a service culture within the parish. Last year, our youth group participated in an IOCC home build to Immokalee, Florida, only two hours away. During this week, we worked on a few homes of those who were affected by the hurricane. We lived together, prayed together, ate together, served together, cleaned together, played together. We had a common purpose 
and executed it together. When disaster and crisis hit, they are difficult times for individual families, children, and others. But how we respond can be an opportunity to promote strength and resilience and a source of healing. Researchers in the mental health field have focused a great amount of attention, not so much on PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but on PTG, post-traumatic growth, which focuses on the individual's ability to become stronger and learn resilience as a result of traumatic experiences when handled properly. And when done so, post-traumatic growth can happen as a result of crisis. This goes hand in hand with our Orthodox faith. Through our difficulties and suffering, we can become stronger in our faith. Alexander Solzhenitsyn speaks about three choices on dealing with suffering. And Dr. Albert Rossi elaborates on so beautifully. Any form of suffering pose difficulty. However, we have three choices, three choices to make. We can give up, we can give in, or we can go on. Rossi writes, and he continues, joy emerges by living through the suffering to the other side. Living through that suffering to the other side. We can't ignore or diminish the crisis, but we can meet it head on. Offer the loving hand of our Lord and walk toward healing. Now imagine this on a parish level with young people in mind. When a disaster or crisis hits, we have to give our young people the opportunity to work with it, meet it head on, and offer them opportunities for success. Parishes and youth groups need a common mission. They need to create a service culture. Whether it's food drives, hosting families in need, moving trees and brush, working with the underprivileged schools, preparing meals, Young people have an innate drive to help those in need. And we have the great and awesome responsibility to offer them a place to give of themselves. The church. When disaster hits, a core foundation of a service culture must be in place. If you wait until the crisis takes place, you're probably too late. I'd like to leave you with five areas that can help you build a service culture in your parish for young people. First, worship. This must be central in everything we do with our young people. Create a worship team, a prayer team, opportunities for them to give thanks to God, to lay aside their fears, stresses and anxieties, and to commune with our Lord. Number two, Connect. Give young people the opportunity to spend time, quality time with their peers. Number three, make them part of it. Remember, people support what they create. Allow them to create the program with you. Number four, debrief. One of the most important aspects of creating a service culture with our young people is giving them the opportunity to break it down to debrief, talk about what they experience, their highs and lows. And number five, make it tangible. Remember that banner I spoke about earlier that all the young people in my parish made for Stoneman Douglas High School? I never could have imagined that a simple banner could help bring so much healing during a stressful time. When we discern God's vision, and commit to fulfilling it, we will never be the same. In times of distress, pandemic, sickness, or anxiety, turning it over to our Lord and Savior is our only remedy. It's our only choice, and often our only option. I know for me, in my own personal life, it is only through those times of suffering, angst, difficulties 
that I can truly grow and truly become healed in our Lord's presence. May our Lord give us hope. May our Lord give us strength. And may our Lord give us true joy as we continue to turn those sufferings into joy, the brokenness into healing. May God bless you and have a blessed day.